Part 4. Winter. Chapter 13. And when she buries a man, that action concerns me. All mankind is of one author, and is one volume. When one man dies, one chapter is not simply torn out of the book, but translated into a better language. And every chapter must be so translated. God employs several translators. Some pieces are translated by age, some by sickness, some by war, some by justice. But God's hand is in every translation, and his hand shall bind up all our scattered leaves again, for that library where every book shall lie open one to another. Meditation 17 Red Vanya's Katusha sat before him. He set the book he was reading to her down and looked at Katusha, as she sat quietly in his presence. Not a day goes by that I don't miss her, whispered Katusha. Is this how it feels to have lost your wife? How it feels to have lost the most important person in your life to some senseless act of violence? Vanya did not speak for some time until at last admitting, Yes. Is this my punishment for what I've done? Was my sorrow not enough? Why did she have to go? She never did anything. It was all my fault. Mine. Suffering's not always done for the act of bringing justice, Katusha. Nor is reward always given to those who deserve it. I can't say why it had to be so. But for whatever reason, it did. Said Vanya, trying his best not to sound too cold. I wish my heart didn't hurt as it does, said Katusha. It's only through pain that we're made stronger. Each blow that comes to us, it strengthens our resolve, fortifies our defenses. What resolve do I need? Towards where shall I lie my defenses? Yelled Katisha, looking down at her lap. I tried to defend my heart, and it only makes it hurt more. I tried to be resolute, that I will not love again, and yet my heart is only made to hurt more by that. Do you fear loving again? asked Vanya. Katisha nodded. Do you still love me? asked Vanya. Katisha said nothing. She neither shook her head nor nodded it. She simply rose from her seat and left Vanya alone in his study. Vanya sighed as he looked at the ceiling of his room and considered what next to do. Vanya was not afraid of loving, but he was jaded. Every person that he loved in his life he had lost, all but Katusha. The very thought of that made him uncomfortable, that he might be afraid of losing her. Not just the idea of losing her, but the fact that it made him realize the possibility of losing her. He poured himself a drink and muttered, I'm sorry, Katusha. I failed you. Both of you. Katisha sat in her bedroom and held on to the bear that Nona had given her. She watched it for life, hoping that it might come alive and speak to her in Nona's voice, so Katisha could hear Nona's lullabies once again. But alas, no response came. She thought about the question Vanya had asked her. She knew in her heart and in her mind that she loved Vanya very much, but she was afraid to. After losing Nona twice, and this time forever, she never wanted to feel the pain of loss again, but yet, when trying to drown her feelings for Vanya, it only hurt her more. She wanted so badly to be taken by Vanya, and hugged and kissed and made to feel safe in his arms, the way that he used to, when they would hug. But it scared her to think that they might do that, only for him to be separated from her. For so long now, Katusha had loved Vanya quite deeply, for how he treated her, for the man that he was, but always things got in the way of her confessing her true feelings for him. It started when she learned that Nona loved Vanya as well, and because Nona was her friend for so long and because Katusha felt that Nona was more deserving of Vanya than she, she did not pursue him romantically, and she held her tongue by making herself more distant to the two. After all the awful things Katusha had done, she didn't believe that she deserved happiness like that. And then there came Nona's death. Not only had Nona just been denied by Vanya, and to pursue him so soon after felt wrong to Katusha, 
but Katusha was quickly made scared of loving somebody again. She knew what had happened to Vanya's wife and his children, and now what had happened to Nona. The world they lived in was just too cruel for true love. It was like trying to grow flowers on the banks of a cesspool. Katusha held her bare and closed her eyes, doing her best not to think of it, but it was impossible for her not to. Katusha felt responsible for Nona's death, for none of this would have come to pass if she had never listened to Clara. There would have been no civil war, there would have been no rise of tyrants like herself, and now whoever stood at the helm of the rebellion. It was almost impalpable to her that the world could kick her so hard. Vanya's mind raced in spite of his efforts to drown it in liquor. The only thing that could help him in this time was talking to Katusha. He left his study and walked downstairs to get another bottle of alcohol, to be able to offer some to Katusha. After all, it would be improper for him to indulge and not offer her any. Vanya reached the kitchen and picked out a bottle before heading upstairs to see Katusha once more. Katusha looked up when Vanya knocked on her door. Katusha, he asked. Come in, replied Katusha. Vanya entered and found Katusha sitting on her bed with the bear that Nona had given her. He sat beside her and asked, Care for a drink? Katusha nodded and took the bottle from him, simply drinking out of it, not bothering with the glasses that Vanya had brought up for them. How are you feeling, Katusha? Katusha tipped her head back as she finished swallowing and stated, Like shit. Well, that's one way of putting it, remarked Vanya. Did you want to talk about something? asked Katusha. Just needed some company. Is your mind racing also? she asked. Yeah, replied Vanya. Katusha held the bottle for a moment before setting it down, allowing Vanya to seize it and have a swig for himself. Oh, sorry I drank from the bottle, commented Katusha, only now realizing what she had done as she watched Vanya do the same. Vanya shrugged, allowing Katusha to relax before her heart quickened a little at the idea of sharing a drink like this with Vanya. Doesn't matter, really. At the end of the day, once we share the same story, what difference is it if we share a drink to drown a shared sorrow? Katusha took the bottle from Vanya and downed more of the liquor, allowing the beverage to calm her tense nerves. Do you... do you ever fear falling in love? asked Katusha to Vanya. Vanya looked down at her and shrugged. Maybe when I was younger. Not so much anymore. I guess now my issue lies in finding those worth loving. You don't fear having your heart broken? Vanya shook his head and sighed. No, not really. It's happened many times before. I lost my wife, my son, my daughter, my friends. It's hard to fear something that you know so well. When I was young, I, I feared what may come with a broken heart. But now, it doesn't really bother me like it used to. I guess it really doesn't even happen like it used to. What do you mean? asked Katusha. Katusha. 